you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say just a second ago, he said a transfer, anointing transfer, a tangible divine impartation. So I expect great things tonight. I want you to set yourself in agreement. I have nothing to prove. I'm not trying to impress anybody. But I want to see the Spirit of God manifest in this place tonight. I want to see lives changed. Amen. Amen. Stretch your hand toward me. Let's pray together. Dear gracious Father, on purpose, we offer ourselves as clay in the Master's hand to mold us and to shape us into the imagery of your own Son from glory to glory to glory. Father, we thank you for divine spirituality, a tangible anointing, a tangible anointing. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. Glory to God. Give the Lord a hand clap, would you please? Glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So revivals, if you would please, to 2 Corinthians. Music and singing prepares your heart to hear. Music and worship prepares your heart to hear. Somebody say amen. Uh, over my lifetime, I've had several divine granted dreams and visions. I've seen angels. I've seen heaven. Uh, uh, I'm not trying to sound braggadocious. I'm just trying to tell you in, in 40 years of age, if you don't see something, you're probably not even saved. And so uh, in this period of time, I've had, I was in a, I believe my daughter was with me and my, and my daughter, my, my wife was in a meeting in, in, in Columbus, Ohio, and uh, a guest speaker showed up, a surprise speaker, happened to be Benny Hinn. And so he showed up there preaching, and at the, some point in the service, he uh, had everybody to stand, you know. And now me and my wife and daughter, we didn't talk about this. And so he, he did something, you know, and, and, and waved the anointing. And we is all uh, bracing, and each one of us made it for mine. We're not going to fall. So, you know, he waits down there, you know, and something about the size of a basketball hit me in the chest and knocked me down. Uh, the anointing is tangible. Mm. I was in another meeting just a year or two ago uh, out in Tulsa. And uh, the man of God was praying, you know, and, and the great big God was told him. So I thought I'd get up and go to the bathroom and refresh, you know, and wash my hands and so forth. And, and, and I came right back through. And lo and behold, when I came back through, I was at the back. And there he was. He just put his hand on me. And bam, down I went. You know, hands wouldn't even dry. Bam. <laughs> and um, and all the way I can describe it is something the size of a beach towel uh, was transparent like a, a living, flowing mirror. Yeah. And it just, it just passed through me. And so another time, I'm in a service, and, and a Brother Kenneth E. Hagin laid hands on me, and, and something came in me, and I left that meeting prophesying and prophesying in rhyme. And sometime in service, when that spirit is really in manifestation, I, I will stand up and preach maybe 25, 30 minutes, and they'll all be in rhyme. Now, folks, I don't care how smart you are, you can't do that. Right. It comes up out of your spirit. There's different di dimensions of the Spirit, different anointings and different levels. Somebody say amen. amen. And so we don't want uh, just an anointing. We don't want uh, you know, a double portion. We want all that he has for us. Yes. We're going to talk about being filled with all the fullness. Yes. Yes. It's time the body grew up and walked in the full stature and the measure of the risen Savior. Somebody say amen. amen. And so we're going to talk about some of the things that, that hinders the flow. Some people's uh, water hose is kinked. Some of y'all got a kink in you. Uh, oh, this is good preaching. Uh, before I, 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 I fully woke up this morning, I heard the Lord say to me, uh, uh, Galatians 6, 2, of course, I knew what it was. He said, bear ye one another's burdens. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. The way to keep your heart tender is always consider how, how what you do affects the other person. Tender hearted don't mean somebody hurts your feelings and you just tune up and bawl. Huh? You, you can tell a, a, a person that is not tender hearted, they're always hard headed. I got some distant relatives that fit that category. I believe Numbers 12 says that Moses, 
I don't turn, I'm just going to quote this. Moses was the meekest man on the planet. Meekness don't mean weakness. Meekness means teachable. See, what we need to understand, we need to humble ourselves and God will exalt you. We don't want us exalting us. We want God putting us over. And so Moses was the most teachable man on the planet. Of course, he was ridiculed, yeah, but he didn't fight back. Now, meekness, uh, I believe Matthew 11 chapter said, Jesus said, come learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Yes. We're going to talk about a lot of people that have a heart condition. You know, it, listen to me. Hard hardness is one of the most dangerous things you can harbor. The Bible calls it stiff neck, uncircumcised at heart. Yeah, yeah, huh? yeah. Meekness is teachable. Well, you may, you may believe something. You may think you know something. But, you know, if, if revelation comes and you was wrong, guess who needs to change? Yeah. We ought to be open. Yeah. We ought to be open to whatever God wants to do and however he wants to do it. And so if he wants to use a, a woman, let him use a woman. If he wants to use a donkey, let him use a donkey. If he wants to use a black man, let him use a black man. If he uses a white man, let him use a white man. Come on, somebody. And, and so people are notorious at judging the vessel and wanting something else. Huh? God would send him a prophet and they'd kill him. They'd send another prophet and they'd beat him up. They'd send another prophet and they hung him on the cross. And so we don't want to be stiff-necked. I want to get to my main text tonight. Out of your belly shall throw rivers of living water. That word there is actually oceans. Uh, uh, Smith Wigglesworth used to say, he said, I'm a thousand times bigger on the inside than I'm on the outside. He said, I'm a thousand times bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. Did you know the most important things in life happen on the inside? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? The most important things in life happens in your spirit, man, or your heart. I don't know how many hundreds of times the Bible uh, speaks of the word spirit or heart. Your heart is the core, like the, like the heart of an oak tree. It's the center of you. And so we, we want to see here how that we can enlarge our heart. See, God's challenge is not that he can't get it to you, he, but he can't get it through you. Right, right. If, you're, if your conduit of power is a small opening, let me give it to you what you can understand. In your spirit is a window. If it can't come out, it can't come in. Huh? For example, let's, uh, if, if, if $100 can't come out of your spirit, $100 can't come in your spirit. I go preach over here, Walt. <laughs> See, if your word don't move you, it won't move God. You ever went to a restaurant, you know, had a, had a bite to eat, you know, and you left a tip, and you only had two bills, and you left a tip, you know, and, and it, well, you had a $100 bill and a $1 bill, and you left a $1 bill, uh, uh, you got outside, and you opened your bill, and whoa, you left a 100 on the table. It will move you. Huh? Come on, somebody. Now, listen to me carefully. I'm smarter than you think. Why does a bald-headed man comb his hair over? Because it buggeth him. Huh? Why do fluffy people wear real loose clothes? Because it buggeth them. Every action, every action that anybody does, there's a reason. The way you can tell you if you're hard-hearted is if you're fearful and selfish. Huh? Listen to me. Whatever your name is, name it. My name's Dale. Well, you just name your name. Three people. Work with me, people. Don't make me come out there. All right, let's call you Wayne. Welcome to Wayne's world. Huh? And, and if you're not careful, your whole world rotates on your head. Huh? A person that comes up, and, you know, and their toe hurts, and their cat's got worms, and their toilet won't flush, and their car won't start. They're full of stuff that bothers them. Can you be kind to unkind people? Yeah. Why? It's a choice. Do you feel like it? No. You feel like slapping them. Huh? Come on, somebody. With both hands. So it's a choice. Meekness is a choice. Well, I don't care what they preach. My daddy believed this way. My grandpa believed this way. Now I believe this way. 
you can absolutely limit God in your life. Sinners can live and die, and if they never accept Christ as their Savior, it's as though God don't exist. A sinner can live and die if they never accept Christ in their life as though he don't exist. A Christian, a Christian, listen to me, a Christian cannot believe in healing. So that limits the healer. They can believe, don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Well, that, well, they don't get to enjoy him. We limit the Holy One of Israel, so we need to be open and pliable in God's hands. A sinner cannot contain the Holy Ghost. It'd blow him up. His dead spirit could not contain the Holy Ghost. So God has to give you the new birth. You become a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. And then the new spirit you have now has the capacity to hold the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is an expansion of your spirit. The Holy Ghost is an expansion of your spirit. You can get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger on the inside. How big do you think God is? Is he bigger than the sun? How about bigger than the solar system? How about bigger than the galaxies? You just don't know how big your daddy is. There's no limitations to the spirit. He didn't say the smaller one is inside you. He said the greater one is inside you. The God of the universe is spirit form, lives inside your spirit, and through all eternity, your spirit will expand. Okay, I'm going to prove it to you. Have you been saved, oh, 15, 20 years or so? Leave at me. Have you changed since you got saved? Oh, you can look back. We had, I don't know how many thousands of CDs out on the field, you know, and uh, about the first four or five years, I tried to buy them back. We're new and improved, you see. <laughs> I thought that was good. Have you seen how technology has advanced? It, well, the technology didn't come from the devil. Huh? The time they get something on the market, the time they get a, a, a pen on the market, it's obsolete. The time you go to the store and, and buy a laptop and get home, it's obsolete. It's doubling and tripling. And, well, that's what it is in God. The bigger you get, the bigger you get, the bigger you get, the more you know. A baby don't know much, has very little reference you can't communicate much with a baby. Huh? I mean, what can you say in a nursery? Get you, get you goo? That's, 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 that's about it. Huh? Come on, somebody. And so let's look here in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and let's look at verse 12. Everybody say, I love Brother Dale. I want you to understand something. God intended for oceans of spirit to flow through you. Oceans. Not just dribble a drop. I'm bigger on the inside than I'm on the outside. After preaching 12,000 sermons, one of, the, one of the perks, one of the benefits of being a preacher, you have a lot of word flow through you. You have a lot of spirit flow through Come on, somebody. You're a conduit. John 15, chapter, he said, he's the true vine, you're the branch. The fruit comes on the branch. It comes from God juice. You don't need Red Bull. Get you some God juice. Huh? Doesn't the flow come from the vine to the branches? He don't produce the fruit. He allows you to produce the fruit. And the Bible says in that same chapter, John, he said, your father is glorified that you bear much fruit. Now, you take an acorn. It's not very big. You talk, take the full-grown tree. It has enlarged. Uh, as a baby, you eight pounds, six ounces. You have enlarged. Some of y'all need to hold that up. <laughs> go ahead to rent a, rent a truck to go before you with wide load on front of us. And with them blinking, don't worry. Oh, come on, somebody. Your spirit can expand and expand. Let's read it here. In first, uh, Second Corinthians uh, chapter 11, Second Corinthians chapter 11, and look, look at verse, uh, verse 12. Is everybody there? Can we put that on the screen? But what I say, 
uh, let me see if I got it right. Um, it's the second, second Corinthians 11 chapter. Uh, let's, uh, thank you, Jesus. Have y'all been enjoying revival? Three people prayed the Lord. We got, we got three turned on people. Hallelujah. Shonda, Shonda, and Rhonda. Uh, the, <laughs> the 11th chapter in verse 12. Is that it? Thank you, Lord. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Let's look at the first chapter. Let's look at first Corinthians. See if that says it. You know, the, 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 uh, you look at so many different translations. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It talks about enlarging your spirit. Everybody say enlarge. It says, oh, fool, I'm going to quote what I can of it. It says, oh, foolish Galatians. Uh, uh, he said, uh, who has constrained you? I believe it's uh, the second Corinthians, the sixth chapter. I'm sorry. Second Corinthians, the sixth chapter and verse, uh, verse 13. Or verse 11. Sixth and eleventh chapter. Sixth chapter, eleventh verse. Let's go back to Bible school, learn how to preach. That's why all numbers run together. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse eleven. Are you? Second Corinthians. There it is. Nope. Second Corinthians, sixth chapter, verse eleven. He said, "Oh, you Galatian, uh, out of your mouth is open unto you, and your heart is enlarged." If I say enlarged. enlarged. Now, 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 McDonald's does that. They call it supersize. You are, you are not straightened in us, but you are straightened in your own bowels. Now, see, that's King James. As you read it, what, what? Straightened in your bowels? Donnie, some fifth abysmal? Straightened in your bowels? Can you even say bowels in church? What it means is the tender part of your insides. He said, I'm not holding you back. He said, your own inside flowings is kinked, constrained. You see, people don't realize it, but they're holding God back because they won't open up to him. Let me tell you what closes you on the inside. Anger, rage, griping, complaining. Did I make a wrong turn? It keeps the flow of the Spirit from coming through you like it ought to. The Bible says, put away malice. Put away judgment. Put that stuff away. Why? Because it hinders you. He said, don't let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. But what it comes out of your mouth should minister grace to the hearer. What we say and do, see, every, see if I haul off and slap you, I might have did it with my hand. But it came out of my heart. If I give you $100, my hand may have gave it to you, but it came out of my heart. Every action... Is a, is a reaction from your spirit. So when someone wears a tattoo and they shave their head with a mohawk, and there's something inside their heart. They're insecure. See, people don't understand, but when you're spiritual, you can read people like a book. You just read them like, I can tell when people are not real. I may tell them, I may not. But, you know, I, if I'm around you, I can, I can tell about what, where you're at spiritually. You'll tell me. You'll tell me. Huh? You're talking to yeah, people just don't appreciate me. They, they, they just run over me and don't appreciate me. They don't even recognize me. And you're like, woe is me, gloom, agony, despair. Yeah. Wayne's world. Wayne's world. Your whole world rotates about you. You can never be happy being selfish. It's impossible. It's impossible. Can't be done. And so if you start ridding the selfishness out of you and ridding the fear out of you, and you can see it in your actions. You, can, you know, there's people that are homebound when they leave their house. They're afraid. Huh? But see, if you believe in perfect love, cast out all fear, God won't let anything happen to me. He watches over me. He'll take care of me. Huh? Then your actions will show that. Your actions tell off on you. Huh? You see people, you know, at a banquet, they say, I, I'm allergic to food, and their plates piled up. They need sideboards. Huh? You can, you, can, you can read people's marriage. When two couples, and they fuss at each other, and she's always correcting him, he'll just cow down. Ooh. You know at home, 
Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Sad. I knew one lady better husband sleep on the back porch. Fed him out the back porch like some kind of dog. One day he did her a favor, he left. He said, you're not straightening us. We're not holding you back. Your own insides is holding you back. Well, now, now, preacher, I just don't believe in prosperity. I have a problem with these prosperity preachers. Have a problem. Well, then you wouldn't like Jesus at all. He became poor that through his poverty you might be made wealthy. He became poor through his poverty, you might become wealthy. If we could stand you by the whipping pole, and he being whipped there at Calvary's tree, him, then whipping him, then whipping him, there's no question, healing's for you. Right. I just wonder, does he want me healed? The blood's splattering everywhere. Yeah. Huh? Come on, somebody. Amen. Everything he did was for, for us and for you and I. Yeah. But if you don't believe in that, that limits him from having that come to you. If you judge other people, it clogs you. So we're going to have some Holy Ghost Drano. Yeah. Roto Rooter and Mr. Clean and Mr. Plumber is in the house. Yeah. We're going to clean your pipes, girl. <laughs> what constrains? What constrains? Anger, malice, cheap. Most Christians, bless your heart, they're cheap led. They're money led, not spirit led. They'll buy the cheapest carpet. Huh? They'll buy the cheapest toilet paper. Huh? If you buy something cheap, well, there may be two or three products, uh, like an instrument or something, you buy the cheapest one, but if it breaks down four or five times, you didn't get a bargain. If you're going to buy something where your life is involved, like an airplane, don't buy the cheapest one. <laughs> you might not live to pay it off. <laughs> you need to be open, be open to, to what God has for you. Now, just for example, uh, 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 Solomon, uh, you'll find this in the book of Kings, he prayed because he didn't know how to lead the people. And he said, Lord, I, you know, I don't know how. And God said, I will add to you, I will enlarge your heart as the sands of the sea. Can your spirit get bigger than you? Absolutely. There's no confines to your spirit. Your spirit is renewed day by day. The outside is getting older, but your spirit's getting younger. And when you get born again, your spirit never ages. You, you, your spirit never ages. There's no limit to it. Your spirit never sleeps. Amen. Your spirit never sleeps. I read where God never sleeps. So when I face a challenge, you know, they don't use me staying up all night. I mean, he's not asleep. Let me go. I'll go ahead and take a nap. <laughs> Ain't no use both of us staying awake. Uh, he can't handle it. That's right. That's right. Somebody say amen. amen. And so we want to we wanna just share something. Prosperity is provided for us. One of his names is Jehovah Jireh. In 3 John, he talks about how that he said, he said, above, beloved, above all, I want you to prosper, be in health. What's the rest of that? As you prosper on the inside. Huh? He has no challenge getting it to you. The challenge he has is getting it through you. Amen. So do you want to be a water hose, a straw, or a PV side for a tin horn? <laughs> open the floodgates. It's time we open up and let God flow through us in whatever matter he wants to. I see the Bible said, lay a sin, every weight, and everything that holds us back from running the race. Every weight. There's things that gets in you over life. Not everybody is nice. And you meet some ugly people. Then you wind up marrying them. <laughs> I'm talking about the distant relatives. They always show up and eat your food. So I said, oh, they came to my house, eat my food, and laugh. Well, praise God, they left. They could have moved in. <laughs> you have to understand, God, listen to me carefully. God has to bless you according to you. He can't bless you according to me. 
He can't flow through you according to my pipes. Now I can lay hands on you, we can bless you, and we can temporarily get you jump started. But I want you to live your life open to God so you can be a vessel to where your cup runs over. Huh? Pornography, bad movies. You don't need to go to a movie and sit and hear cuss words for an hour and a half. Any words you hear lodges inside you. He said here, he said, uh, he said, uh, prosper as your soul prospers. You know what that's got to do with your spirit? Your soul chooses what your spirit hears. Your soul chooses what your spirit does. See, you can get angry and not yield to it. Or you can get angry and not put knots on somebody's head. Can't you? Your soul is the one that lets you yield or not yield to whatever the spirit uh, that, you're, that you're facing. You can you cannot yield to anger. You cannot yield to fear. And so as you learn to control that through the fruit of what? Temperance. Then God is allowed to flow you through you more freely. Amen. See, folks, people, people come up in the prayer line and they want a super duper anointed preacher such as myself <laughs> to lay hands on them and make all their past go away. They've been dog ugly and mean all their life, stubborn as a mule. Not in this area, way up north in Greenland, in Greenland. Yeah. And they want all their problems, and you can listen to them. All they want to talk about is what they're facing. Yeah. Yeah. Their whole world is about them. Yes, they don't have ministry on their mind. They don't have working for God on their mind. It, they're just, I'm just drowning in me. I'm in Wayne's world. <laughs> Most people live this way. It's all about them. It's so sad. That's what's wrong with most of our churches. It's all about them. Jesus prayed that that all would become one. Well, brother, it don't look like it. Now, it's going to happen because there's no no expiration date on it. It's going to happen, huh? But what people don't realize, if you're all about your church and you don't care about that church, then the body is, uh, is fragmented and the power can't flow like it wants to. You, 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 get, you get any kind of instrument or a, a blow dryer or, or a, a radio and you crinkle the cord and you, you break some of those wires in there, the power can't flow like it's supposed to. I don't care how much power you got to come through the hose. If it's kinked, it can't flow like it's supposed to. We have been hindering God by not being open. I've had preachers get mad, get mad at me because I preached on prosperity. I said, well, what do you want, poverty? I mean, what's the other choice? I don't believe in healing. Well, then stay sick. But the same person that don't believe in prosperity will work 40 hours a week for 40 years trying to get some of it. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. One day of favor is worth a thousand days of labor. Brother, he brought them out of Egypt with favor. He brought them out of Egypt with favor. He put favor on, 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 on Solomon's life. I talk about Moses being meek. He was also the most used man in his generation. If you want to be used by God, be meek. That went over good, didn't it? Ain't nobody going to tell me. I've read that Bible from, 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 from Genesis to, to Revolutions. I know all them preachers, that, ben, that ben, Benjamin Hinn and, and Oral Rogers and Tex Humbard. I know all them preachers. <sighs> Woo. You'd be surprised how many people tell me about preaching. I'm serious. They don't, I've had, I, I, I know this is hard for you to believe, but I have sat there and listened to sinners complain about churches not having Sunday night service. Why would you care? You don't go at all. (laughs) See, adultery is selfish. Adultery is selfish. When you're all about you and your needs and your wants. I told my wife, when you turn turn 40, I'm going to swap you in for 220s. She said, darling, you're not wired for 220. <laughs> uh, still not sure about that, but it, uh, 
But every time something like that happens, they try to justify themselves. Well, I have needs, and I have wants, and I have... Well, Jesus was a man. Yeah, and he told sin no. That's right. That's right. Huh? Yes, sir. You see, selfishness, always thinking about you and how you feel and what you want. Now, see, I know preachers don't know this because I deal with preachers all the time, and I'm not against preachers, but they'll say, oh, we'll come, we'll come to revival. We're coming, we're coming, we're coming. And they never show up. Well, see, they don't know. They tell me their word's no good. If their word's no good, their character's no good. I can tell you the problem to the church. They're no good. Huh? Listen, listen. People try to blame a lack of money. Money's not your problem. Money is nobody's problem. People is nobody's problem. The devil's nobody's problem. Jesus did with the devil. Huh? He told Joshua, he said, there won't be no man stand before you. Man can't stop this. What's stopping it is the constraint in your own spirit. The constraint in your own spirit don't allow the, uh, the, the increase to flow. You can take somebody in poverty, bathe in poverty, and the highway can come through and take their little dump of a house, you know, and, and, and give them a brand new three-bedroom house, and in a matter of months, I'll have goats in the house. Why? You got them out of the temporary mess, but you couldn't get the mess out of them. Thank God. Thank God we got born again. We're a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Everything in you is new. Huh? But see, you can be born again, spirit filled, and still relate back to the old man, be angry, jealous, full of strife, mad. I went to church over there. They didn't let me sing. We've heard you, darling. You can't sing. Sit down. <laughs> they, they did you a favor. They kept you from embarrassing yourself. Huh? Somebody say amen. You're most like God when you're operating in the fruit. You're most like God because it is the love of God. It is the faith of God. It is the patience of God. It's the temperance of God. When those things are operating in you, that's God operating in you. It is impossible to love your mother-in-law. Can't be done. Impossible. It takes a miracle. It takes the love of God. I thought that was good. Go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, please. Do you see something? 3 and 20. I told you the night before, night before, the biggest challenge God has is getting it over to us. Because the, 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 the door blocker is we think we know. I've been saved for 40 years. I know all there is to know about that faith. Do you now? Do you now? Your car's held together with duct tape and bailing wire. <laughs> huh? You live on Ding Dong and Dr. Pepper. You ain't got a real tooth in your head. You either hear sermons like, you know, toothbrush. I'm going to hit you and run. This is my last night. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Have you found it? Now unto him that is able. How many believe God's able? Listen, listen. He can make you a tree in there for daylight. He has no problem. He has none. If he has to have Bill Gates to have a flat, uh, flat tire in your front yard. Yeah. Praise God. Yes, sir. If he has an old cow to big, dig up a bag of money and bring it to you, milk her before you send her home. Right. <laughs> Amen. He can get it to you, but he won't get it to you if he can't get it through you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I remember one time the Lord told me to give $10,000. I said, <laughs> You can tell when it has effect on you when you, when you gasp for breath. So I'm just trying to say it. You know what it is to get $10,000 out of a preacher? It's called a miracle. <laughs> oh, honey. Oh, honey. We can hammer it down. Boy, we can preach. Kill it. It shall be given. Try to get them to do it. Huh? Huh? You let a church have some kind of expense? We can't afford that. Can't afford that. I called a preacher one time, bless his heart, and empty head. A friend of mine said I ought to call him. And I, I said, uh, uh, you know, this brother Dale said, uh, a friend of mine recommended we ought to come down and maybe preach for you. He said, well, we're all poor. We're all sick. We're all broke on fixed income. I said, who fixed it? 
I said, is any of the word of God working for y'all? People brag. Now we ignorant, we poor, we redneck. We poor, we ignorant, we redneck. But we love the Lord. Well, you know, God will deliver you from all three of those things. He takes pleasure in the prosperity of his saints. Do you want to see your kids doing well? Sure. He said above everything, I want you to prosper and be in health. But you have to have a mindset. If you've ever been around anybody that went through the Great Depression, maybe an old granny or somebody went through the Great Depression, go to their house. Go to their house, pull out their drawer, and you'll find old balls of tinfoil. On the counter, they have mayonnaise jars. Save every mayonnaise jar. Another drawer, they got bent nails. Huh? But granny, granny, well, how'd you got these bent nails? Well, can't never tell them I won't build a crooked house. That, that, that so indentured them, that so crimped their spirit, come on somebody, that so clogged them, yeah. prosperity can't flow through them. Now, if you'll notice this, anytime someone, you know, gets an inheritance or a settlement or maybe, the, you know, win a lot or something, within a year or two, they're broke. Yeah. Why? Because they're not, they're, not, they're not prosperous on the inside. Notice here, he said, uh, he said, down to him that's able to exceed the abundantly above all. We can ask your thing, watch it, according to the power he has. No, no. According to what? The power that works where? Inside you. Inside you. Folks, I have laid hands on a half a million people in 40 years. Half a million people, I've laid my physical hands on people. And folks, there's some people, you lay hands on them, you jerk the juice out of you. You go, whoa! You like touching a live wire. Huh? And others, cold, dead, and slimy. Huh? You think, go on back to the deep freeze. <laughs> Amen. Like laying hands on a brass doorknob. The power of God is like electricity. The power of God is like water. It's called oil. Come on, somebody. Out of your belly shall flow. Proverbs said, guard your heart. Out of your heart flows the issues of life. Issues of life. Yes. There's a reason why a woman wears way too much makeup and short skirt and, uh, and, and her clothes too tight. She's getting old. <laughs> she wants to put the advertisement out there <laughs> that she can still cut the mustard. <laughs> I may not look like a Barbie doll. Uh huh. <laughs> not trying to be mean. But you, every action, there's a reason for it. Huh? They some guy takes spray paint, paint their head black, you know. <laughs> Watch out with these old pouty lips. They suck it from back here and put it up here. Cost ten thousand dollars. I'll give you a fat lip, save you ten grand. As a rule, a man's a fool. When it's hot, he wants it cool. When it's cool, he wants it hot. He always wants what he ain't got. Huh? White people, you know, they want to be brown. Go, they want to go tan. Black people want to be light, you know. Got kinky hair. They want to straighten it. The Bible said, born again. He said, not the wearing of gold or fretting of hair. But he said, it's the hidden man of the heart. That is meek and quiet, which is the God's sight, great price. What's God looking for? He looks at your heart. He, he likes to see somebody that's, that's in, in, in control and temperance, that don't blow up, don't have to have their way. I don't mean, mean this wrongly, but there's some people just, just throw a fit, they don't get their way. I tell them, go out in the parking lot and help yourself. Just throw all the fits you want to. People are not supposed to cow down to you every little whim. Amen. I tell my wife this. There is a God, and you're not him. <laughs> you can't fix everything. You can't meet everybody's needs. Right. You can't unravel with one prayer all their disobedience for life. Right. Huh? 
He said in Isaiah 119, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you're willing, if your heart's willing, if you'll obey God, you're willing, then things will flow to you. If you're not obedient, they'll flow away from you. He said to Solomon, he said, I'll enlarge your heart. It'll be like the sands of the sea. Sands of the sea. There's no end to that. There's no end. Moses the most meekest. Uh, Solomon, he was the most wealthiest. Things flowed to him. If you want people to like you, adjust things on the inside. Huh? Don't make me tell you my nerd story. <laughs> All right. There's a nerd in high school, you know. He's just a nerd. And, you know, he has no confidence in himself. So here is the cheerleader he's got a crush on. And he'll go up to him and say, uh, you wouldn't uh, like to go out with me, would you? Well, he's driving her away with his own actions. He has no self-confidence. When you go to God, oh, God, I'm so unworthy, I'm just a worm. Huh? I've had people testify, I'm just a worm. I said, well, listen up, wormy. <laughs> See, there, that's false humility. They're, the people are proud. I'm so humble. Uh, I'm, well, yeah, let me cross you and see how humble you are. Huh? You've been a cat fat in a minute. True humbleness is lowly of heart. You don't have to have your way. Everything don't just get you riled. You're in charge of your own self. It's called temperance. Some of y'all look at me kind of strange. Uh, let's go up a little further. I'll show you this. Uh, back up to verse 19. This is 320. Go to 19. This is called preaching backwards. <laughs> 319. And to know the love of Christ was past his knowledge. Just what? Pass his knowledge to you. Might be filled with all the what? Fullness of God. Now, folks, most Christians just got a taste. Most of them have just got a taste. He's in there, but he's, he hadn't allowed him to flow like he, like he ought to. I want to be filled with all the fullness. Don't you? Back up next verse, please. Uh, he said uh, in verse, uh, verse 18, uh, here's the love of God. Verse 18, may be able to comprehend. With all saints, what is the breath, the length, the death? What's he talking? He's trying to get over to you to comprehend, to understand his fullness is there, but he has to work with you. Listen, if you don't forgive, God will feel sorry for you and just forgive you anyhow. Huh? Huh? You don't forgive, guess what? He won't forgive. He has to work with you according to what you do. Jesus was the most powerful and the best preacher on the planet. Can I get a witness? Well, yeah, when he preached, it made everybody mad. And so they didn't get nothing. So he said, I'll tell y'all one thing. There was many lepers, many widows. Did none of them get anything? Right. Who got something? The ones that obeyed. Yes, the ones that obeyed. You have to be careful. You don't talk yourself out of the things of God. Huh? You may be in a, in a service and, and the, the preacher off a prayer line. And you know, well, I don't go up there. I don't go up in front of everybody. What well, if I fall down? I was in the service in McAllister, Oklahoma. This has been old 20 years ago. And I was in the uh, Church of God church. And uh, I was preaching across town, and their, their evangelist didn't show up, so they asked me to come over and, and take your spot, so I did. And about the third or fourth night, the, the lady there was very, very, very uh, 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 sophisticated. Uh, you know, she's very uh, high culture. And uh, I looked over one night, and the fire of God was falling, and she was rolling on the floor. And when she came to her, she said, oh, She's so embarrassed. You see, the Spirit will have you do things. Huh? This generation hardly knows anything about dancing in the Spirit. Hardly knows anything. You cannot gracefully dance in the Spirit. It's not a waltz. Huh? Spirit of God hits you, it's like you got fire in it. Huh? Come on, somebody. When the Spirit flows through you, I've had him flow through me sometimes like fire, sometimes like water, sometimes like wind. He has five manifestations. Right. Yes, However he chooses to flow, that's what we ought to go with. Yes, sir. But let's keep our pipes clean. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Give the Lord a hand clap, would you please? 
Go to Psalms 18, please. Go to Psalms 18. I'm trying to hurry. I'm not going to preach too long tonight. Maybe a couple, two, three hours. Psalms 18. Just kidding, folks. Lighten up. It's Wednesday, Wednesday night live. Psalms 18 chapter. Uh, we want to see something here. Uh, what the world thinks is great is not what God calls great. Uh, have you noticed in our society when these, these athletes at, at 18 and 19 year old are paid, you know, several million dollars? They go out and buy the bling bling. Huh? And they pack a pistol. I think the statistic says 60% of all athletes carry guns. See, you can't take an 18, 20 year old boy and make him multi millionaire without affecting his, his psyche. So, you know, they put tattoos everywhere to make everybody think they're great. Psalms 18. Let's see what the Bible says about being great. Psalms 18. Is everybody there? Let's look at verse 36, please. Or verse 35. 18, 35. Psalms 18, 35. Thou hast given me the shield of my salvation, thy salvation. The right hand hath holding me up, and thy gentleness has made me great. Thy gentleness has made me great. What's great in God's eyes is the fruit of the Spirit. Huh? What's great in God's eyes? You being kind, tender-hearted, preferring the brother. All seems weak in the natural realm. The world says, grab the gusto. Step on anybody's head you have to to get to the top. Make any kind of deal you have to. Come on, somebody. But God says, look to me. Walk in gentleness. Walk in love. Walk in joy. Huh? Walk in. See, now listen. Patience is with God. Long suffering is with people. I've met some people long suffering. Not everybody's cute as you are. Not everybody's on the same level you are. Huh? And so you have to learn that you, you, God helps us learn how to relationship with people that are not maybe in the same class or, or same level you are, but you can't condescend to them. Well, we're better than those folks because we speak in tongues and they don't, they don't speak in tongues. We do. We're, we're tongue talkers. Well, that don't make you any better. Huh? I know some tongue talkers don't live near as good as some that don't talk in tongues. Huh? This is good preaching. He said, uh, he said, greatness, uh, you made me, gentleness has made me great. It must say gentleness. And then verse 36, thou hast enlarged my steps unto, unto me that my feet may not slip. He enlarged their borders. He enlarges your perimeter. He enlarges your anointing. He enlarges you on the inside. You're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's going to take all eternity for you to expand. Uh. I hope you can handle this. It's in the book of John. He says, uh, the, this is 1 John chapter 3. He said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be. Yeah. Yeah. You have no idea what we're going to be like once we have a glorified spirit. Huh? I'm telling you, folks, I've had, I've had a glimpse of it. And the next world, whoo! Some will be rulers over five cities. We will travel to the speed of light, yes, sit down and eat for three months and not gain a pound. <laughs> Pass me the rocky road. <laughs> huh? You can eat banana split for breakfast? Huh? Come on, somebody. Skate down the boulevard on gold. Turn your neighbor's diamond doorknob. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No sick, no broke, no walkers, no... Huh? No wheelchairs, no nursing homes, no old age assistance. Come on, somebody. No housing project, no government check, no disability. Huh? Huh? We're going to expand and expand and expand all eternity. But the good news is we've tasted the power here before we go. I want everything God has for me. When it comes to God, I am a pig, piggy, hoggy, hoofy sow. I want everything God has. Don't you? Huh? 
Now, this is my own personal belief. I can't prove this, but you can't prove me wrong. Uh, the, the award ceremony, God is going to reach over and dry the tear out of your eye. I believe, first of all, he'll, 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 he'll draw back the curtain and let you see what you could have done and could have been and should have done and walked into his fullness and his perfect will. Huh? And then he was just say, okay, baby, okay, baby. Folks, listen, we, we're, we're not even coming close to what God has for us. The whole world is waiting on us to step up to the plate. Waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. We're here by design. This is our time. You're alive on the earth. We ought to be up and about the master's business. And when we go, we ought to be full of the Holy Ghost and power. You ought to be a conduit, a blessing. He told Abraham in Genesis, he said, I'll be a blessing and I'll multiply you so you can be a blessing. How does blessings come? By you being a blessing. Did you know every good thing, every good thing has to clear your heart? Everything. Everything good has to clear your heart. Everything bad has to clear your heart. From the abundance of a good man's heart, good things come to pass. What do you come? Right through your heart. How can some men go slit somebody's throat and then go have a steak? Don't even bother them. Their conscience is seared. Their spirits are clogged. They're full of anger and strife. And the Bible says their conscience are seared. God can't get something through a seared conscience. Is he almighty? Yeah. Is he able to do above and beyond what you can say? Yeah. But it's according to the power inside you. And if you're all clogged up. Now, folks, life is not fair. People don't always treat you right. Huh? I mean, you take Joseph, he wound up in jail. It wasn't his fault. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Lady lied on him. He got thrown in jail. Yeah. He didn't cry the blues. He came in there to the, to the, to the, to the judge and said, hey, how come y'all sit down? How, how come y'all ain't got joy? Yeah. Got what? Joy, what? Yeah. Joy, what? Yeah. Joy. Nehemiah says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's one of those fruits. How are you great? Gentleness, kindness, temperance. Faithfulness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got your seat belt on? Go to Galatians 5th chapter, please. Galatians 5th chapter. I want you to see something. I'm going to show you something you probably don't know. Nothing can stop the nature of God. Nothing. He said we're made partakers of his divine nature through his promises. That's how you partake. Of the, now listen, don't get upset with me. I say this often. You can't lose weight by watching an exercise video. <laughs> Boy, I'm going to lose weight. My, 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 my uncle owns a gym. <laughs> well, that's good. Now, don't get mad at me. But you know, most people think they've really done something. Well, I went to church. Yeah. I heard him preach. Right. Did you ever think about doing what was preached? Right. You mean you want me to actually do it? And, and be kind to my wife and don't scream and holler at her no more. I'll never get anything to eat. I went, quit preaching and went to meddling. Galatians, the fifth chapter. Is anybody there? 522. Galatians 522. Here he's talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Why don't you see something? Because sometimes we read the King James, we just kind of overlook it, you know. That's when you ought to study James, uh, uh, King, uh, Galatians, the fifth chapter, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is, is love and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and goodness and faith. Make this difference against us. There's no law or no force. If I say no force. There's nothing on the planet that can stop it. Nothing can stop the fruit of the Spirit. Nothing. Nothing. Everybody wants the gifts. But, folks, the fruit's what's powerful. Gifts are temporary. Huh? Come on, somebody. You can get to see how many heal through a gift. But if they don't straighten up and live right and go to church, they'll lose it. I tell them, Pastor Jody, the other night, in, in 40 years of ministry, we, we've got people healed through the gifts. The highest we've ever got anybody healed on a gift is three times. Would you care to explain? Okay. Uh, there's a man was deaf. Afraid for him, God opened his ears. 
Gift of healing. Open his ears. He don't go to church. He don't live right. Two, three, four, five months. Goes deaf again. I come back for another revival. God opens his ears again. He don't get in there. Don't read his Bible. Don't go to church. Hmm? Third time. Fourth time. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Why? God expects you to school yourself in faith. God expects you to get in the Word for you. Come on, somebody. We had a lady healed of cancer in one city. The doctor put it in the paper. She was healed of three different kinds of cancer. One of them was leukemia, I think uh, lung cancer, and bone cancer, and blood cancer. And she was healed. The doctor put it in the paper that this patient was healed. She's healed one of her tent crusades. Well, and this, uh, this lady uh, was healed, uh, you know, and the doctor said she was cured. And she lived about a year or so, and it came back on her. We come back in the tent. She got healed a second time. I think twice is all we got her healed. And then, then about three years later, she died. And guess what? All the kin folks blame me. Oh, I didn't do nothing. Huh? We got her four extra years. But see, what I'm trying to tell you is, in a prayer line, we can't straighten out your whole life. You might be a bear to live with. You might be a bugger. I don't know. Huh? You might have a temper. Scream, holler, fight, kick, stomp. Yeah. Become a prayer line. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You might look for the icing on it. Shanda, shanda, shanda. <laughs> See, you come here, you're all pretty up, got your teeth in. <laughs> but we don't live in the church house. Huh? And so all through life, what you encounter, if you let it, it will either clog you or you can chew dough. No, I'm not going to harbor unforgiveness. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Not, I don't care what they say about me. Don't the Bible tell us to turn the other cheek? Don't the Bible teach us not to harbor? Don't let the sun go down on your wrath? I'm closing. Some of you are yawning in the spirit. I hate when that happens, but it does happen. Go to Ephesians. One more time, we'll close with this. Then we'll uh, minister Go to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 31. Ephesians 4. Are y'all getting anything? Yeah. Folks, this is, this is, this is, you can learn more here sometime in one service than you can learn in four years of Bible college. That's right. yes, sir. We, don't, we don't need a bigger head. That's right. Huh? That's right. well, I, I can quote that Bible. I'm a quoter. <laughs> Bible said, knowledge alone I'm in one city preaching, and there's a dingling out there. And I, I would say a scripture, and before I could get to it, he'd quote it. And he louder than I would, I had a microphone. I said, tell him I work alone. Now, why, why would anybody do that? He's trying to draw attention to himself. See, every action is for a reason. Everything you do is for a reason. Now, here's the problem. People do it so much, they become accustomed to it. It's normal to them. Huh? You ever around someone, you know, and the wife jump, jumps onto the husband for cussing? And he says, well, I didn't cuss. They do it so much, they don't even pay any attention to it. It becomes normal to them. Huh? Some people's houses they live in, their volume is what? Loud? <laughs> you can hear him across the street. I'm in the Air Force. And he was just screaming, hollering, and cuss one another. Huh? I'd find me somebody else to go home with. Uh.